What's going on everybody? It is Daniel here for Mobile Syrup and uh, this is the Sony Tablet S. It is uh, Sony's first uh, venture into the Android tablet market and uh, this is a 9.4 inch 1280 by 800 resolution LCD display. It has a 1 gigahertz dual core Tegra 2 processor. It has 1 gig of RAM and this particular model has 16 gigabytes of internal storage. So let's take a look at the hardware and we'll take you on a tour of some of the inclusions that Sony has uh, made to this uh, model and we'll go from there. So as you can see on the front, it, it just looks like a normal kind of android -y tablet, pretty similar to any other devices out there. But uh, you have to know that uh, this is, sorry for the focus, I'll come right back, there you go. Um, you have to know that this is actually quite a bit smaller, 9.4 inches may not sound a lot smaller than 10.1 inches, but it, in real world use it uh, translates into a much better experience, at least in uh, my opinion, to hold the device. It's uh, only 598 grams, which is a little bit heavier than the Galaxy Tab 10.1, but you don't notice that too much. So on the bottom of the device, um, it's the narrowest point of the device, and you see the charging dock here is a little bit strange looking, but uh, it, it works pretty nicely, although we found that the a charger does fall out quite easily. Um, on the left hand side of the device there's actually a space for uh, a little kind of uh, rope here that, that is included and uh, you can use that to keep it secure. Uh, there's a speaker as well as this uh, 3.5 millimeter jack and the door. And you can see that the that the design actually goes and uh, extends outward. It uh, expands a little bit while it curves and this one piece of uh, contiguous plastic goes all the way around the device for a very nice unifying uh, design. Not for everybody certainly but definitely a unique design among Android tablets. Uh, this door comes out and reveals a micro USB port and a full size SD card slot which is really nice because uh, SD cards are significantly cheaper than micro SD equivalents. This takes a little bit of coaxing to get back. On the top there's uh, nothing uh, but just this uh, kind of textured pattern here which makes it nice to hold. On the right hand side we have the power button. There's a notification light over here which uh, indicates charging and notifications. You have a volume rocker as well as a tiny little reset button that needs a uh, paper clip or a pin in order to get to but it's a nice thing to have and the other speaker on the right hand side. We have a 5 megapixel camera, no flash unfortunately and we also have two stoppers here which makes it very nice to lay down on a flat surface so that the back won't actually get damaged at all. Okay so on the front of the device we have a VGA front facing camera and uh, when we turn it on we see this bright beautiful uh, display. This is not an IPS display like on the Asus Transformer, but viewing angles are excellent and uh, definitely show you the um, high quality uh, parts that go into all of Sony's products. So you see you can hold down this unlock button here and it kind of uh, vacillates and you can move it on to the side there and that will open up the uh, home screen. So we have five home screens just like most Android honeycomb tablets, this Tron-like design. This is pretty stock. They haven't done much to it. They've added a few apps, which I'll go over in a second, but um, a couple things to note. Firstly, there are three permanent shortcuts at the top left here. There's mail, uh, there's the, uh, what is this, the remote control app, which I'll go over in a second, and we also have the reader app as well. So uh, these are new. As well, there's a favorites menu here which consolidates all of your apps uh, and media if you want it. And it gives you this nice 3D view and you can sort out what you want shown. So uh, we'll actually go into the gaming because this is the first um, PlayStation certified Android tablet, much like the uh, Xperia Play, which is the first PlayStation certified smartphone. Uh, this has a custom camera UI and uh, it's not the most attractive one on the market but it does the job. You can see your camera roll down at the bottom here, the button on the right hand side, quick uh, settings to change from the front facing 
to the back camera and vice versa. You also have other settings here. Uh, you can change the resolution. Uh, you can also quickly change from photo to video. Um, I don't think that this takes HD video. I'm going to have to confirm that. But uh, it just says high, low, and YouTube. So uh, it probably does shoot at 720p on high, and uh, I will verify that for the review. So that's just the, a quick overview. This is a photo I took of um, my Optimus Prime action figure. You can see it's pretty blurry, not much detail to it, especially even though it's in uh, pretty good lighting. Um, you can see the contrast is pretty good, and colors are accurate, but you're not going to get a whole lot of, um, a whole lot of detail here. Uh, so, the second thing I want to show you is the camera, the uh, music application has been updated a little bit. Uh, it's got this kind of 3D movement here. You can throw your different uh, albums out if you want them. You can organize them. It's also got one-touch DLNA support, so I can push these songs to a DLNA-supported player, which is really nice. Uh, next, I'm going to show you a couple of the apps that are included by Sony. We have a Video and Music Unlimited app currently not working uh, because they haven't been launched yet but Sony uh, promises to have lots of um, paid content here and uh, should be a very nice uh, content provider uh, for those people who are missing them coming perhaps from an iPad and, and I, iTunes this is going to be a nice ecosystem that Sony has developed here. We also have the Sony Reader software which you, you can download from the market um, Again, I'm not sure if it's uh, available yet because they're they're just launching this uh, soon. It's coming out in the middle of September. Oh, there it is. So uh, we can just update that. This is the market application here and uh, definitely is uh, in need of a little bit of improvement in terms of performance, but uh, it's, it, it's very attractive. So this uh, reader software is going to give you access to the same reader um, content that your Sony reader would have, your e-ink based Sony reader and it's uh, pretty competitive. I have one of these Sony readers that I use as well. So you do need to sign in but once you do that, uh, oh we can we can actually start uh, doing it without without uh, signing in. So let's open up Around the World in 80 Days, one of the classics that are included here for free by Jules Verne. You can see double pane uh, very good performance, nice reading experience, text is really sharp, contrast is excellent, and, uh, and as an e-reader, because one side is thicker than the other, it's very nice and light to hold it in one hand, so you get excellent performance that way as well. So the e-reader software, you can buy content directly on, uh, on the device. You also have access to other content providers like Amazon Kindle or Kobo, and uh, you can have your own uh, content uh, uploaded from your computer uh, on these EPUB uh, compatible e-readers like Eldico here or Eldico. So lots of e-reading content for you to use. There's uh, something called Select App, which is an app uh, store that Sony's going to be uh, promoting. It's coming soon, but it's going to be promoting Honeycomb compatible tablet apps in a more uh, intuitive setting. So when you go to the Android market, you'll understand there isn't a lot of honeycomb specific content right now. Social feeds is kind of a social consolidator. It's a Twitter, Facebook, and other application. And it actually works pretty well. And you can divide it into showing you just videos and pictures or anything else. You can also um, search, you can search and you can group your content into streams, which is nice. Uh, the other application that I think is going to get a lot of use here is the remote control app. Now, these, this supports more than just a uh, Sony TV or Sony um, receiver. It has tons of different brands, tons of different categories here, all the way from iPod docks to DVD VCRs and uh, will definitely be something that is incorporated into your home entertainment theater. You can put this right by you on, you know, on your coffee table while you're watching TV, flip through channels while you're surfing. Really convenient and certainly intuitive, and uh, it's great that Sony supports multiple vendors. 
The next thing I wanted to show you is the video player. Video content on here is awesome. It's really, really fluid. Plays back uh, 720p content in vivid um, quality. It's very smooth at 30 frames per second, and this uses Sony's Bravia software uh, optimizations that came on the Xperia Arc earlier this year. So you can see content is really beautiful. Colors are vivid, and uh, I think this is actually one of the best uh, movie watching experiences on any tablet right now because unlike the iPad, which is a 4x3 aspect ratio, this is a 16x9 aspect ratio, and uh, that makes for watching widescreen films much more entertaining. Uh, in the app drawer, you can see that it's been updated a little bit for uh, Sony's kind of uh, design. Gives you a shimmering effect and gives you a little bit of a 3D effect as well. There are a few more applications that Sony supports here, but I'm going to dive right into their PlayStation content here. So it comes preloaded with Crash Bandicoot. Now I've already um, loaded this, but I'm going to start a new game just to show you how it works. Uh, I went in here earlier and I made a couple changes, so I just want to go back there. So this supports third-party controllers such as the PlayStation 3 controller or uh, any other USB or Bluetooth compatible controller. This doesn't have a, a normal size USB port, it has a micro USB port, but it does support Bluetooth controllers which uh, will work because it's uh, the uh, Android 3.1 supports USB host. So these on-screen controls are pretty good for you know what they do. Uh, they're not the best, they're not as good as having a dedicated controller, but they'll do the job. So you can see, I'm trying to get through this. So there you go. Now this has not been scaled up at all. The graphics are identical to what you'd find on the PlayStation 1 you know, over 10 years ago, but certainly does the job. And it's a lot of fun. I mean, you're going to be able to purchase these from the App Store, from the Sony uh, Select App Store. So you'll have a lot of content there. And because so much content has been added for the Xperia Arc, this is uh, just, it's just going to be an extension of that. Oh, sorry, the Xperia Play is going to be an extension of that. Oh, there you go. So I'm not very good at this, but uh, you also notice that the game is stored on, uh, it's actually frozen and you can go back to it at any time. So if I want to return to my game, it'll just ask me to continue. And there you go. So it's stored in the background, kind of like uh, an iOS app and uh, the state is frozen. So this is running, um, it's running Android 3.1. See over here. Uh, 3.2 has been released, but it's not, uh, it, it won't do much good for a tablet of this size since it was optimized mostly for Android tablets with 7 inch screens or less. This does come with, uh, as I said, 16 gigs of RAM or 16 gigs of uh, internal storage, but it's divided into 8 gigs or 9 gigs of internal storage and about 4 gigs for internal application storage. You also have access to all of your different accounts and such. And the last thing I wanted to show you is the keyboard. Now, the keyboard is not the greatest keyboard on the market. I could have preferred, I would have preferred something a little bit different, but uh, it does the job. Unfortunately, you don't have access to the stock honeycomb keyboard, which I like a lot better. You can't make this much bigger either. Uh, this doesn't have multiple sizes, but it does the job. So, hello. You see, it does support autocorrect, but it's not as accurate as the stock honeycomb experience but one thing that's interesting is that when you go to the password it'll actually come up with a little number uh, number pad on the side here which is really nice and I've, I'm surprised that not more manufacturers include such things so that's been a quick overview of the Sony Tablet S this is available for $499 for the 16 gigabyte version $599 for the 32 gigabyte version and I think this is one of the most well-rounded Android tablets released. Obviously, um, the software is a little bit buggy. You know, the performance is not ideal compared to iOS. And certainly the app selection is not up to snuff with uh, the iPad. But if you are set on an Android tablet, this is the one to, to get, in my opinion, if you don't need the, you know, m tiny... Uh, thin size of the Galaxy Tab 10.1, but uh, I think they are very competitive in their features. And although this doesn't have quite the number of additions in terms of widgets and uh, other bundled applications as the TouchWiz enabled Galaxy Tab 10.1, this is a really nice, uh, very compact 
and high-performing Android tablet. So this has been Daniel for Mobile Syrup, and thank you so much for watching.